Hi there and welcome to the Amazing Craft YouTube channel where we look inside the wonderful world of crafting. My name is Becky and in this short video we're going to be looking at the fabulous book How to Sew Little Felt Animals by Sue Quinn. Now I don't know if any of you have had this book before, looked at this book before, but if you haven't on a website quite often it's difficult to see what's inside the book. So we thought let's get, have a look, delve inside what actually is inside books and kits as well. And this book here is a little cracker of a book. Um, it's written by Sue Quinn, who is a well-known bear maker um, and hedgehog maker. The first work I ever came across of Sue's was a little hedgehog, absolutely gorgeous, like a mohair hedgehog, beautiful little thing. Um, there aren't any hedgehogs in this book, but there are plenty of other creatures and lots of gorgeous, gorgeous photographs. So here's some of the little characters you can make. There's a family of moles, there's rabbits, there's mice, bears and squirrels as well. They're all made from felt um, and if you're using felt uh, I would use uh, 30 or 40 percent felt or 100 percent felt. Don't use acrylic felt for this because when you're sewing with it it can sometimes split and stretch etc. You want a good quality 30 or 40 percent wool felt um, or 100 percent wool felt and uh, that will make your toys last longer, easier to work with and look better as well. So the book, Sue goes through, she talks here about the fabrics as well, tells you what to use um, and the equipment that you need. Um, not too much equipment needed really. Um, Sue does this, most of the stuff that she makes in this book is done on a machine, which I think is absolutely incredible. Um, they're quite small the creatures I've got these are the two little creatures that I've made from the book here um, I must admit I'm a little bit frightened of a sewing machine um, so I tend to sew mine by hand but Sue does hers by machine quite competently so it depends on your level of skill on a sewing machine or with a sewing needle I suppose um, they are just so sweet they really really are there's two different sizes I've got here and that's because in the book the patterns are all in there lovely gorgeous patterns Let's see if I can find where it goes the patterns for the rabbit here um, but they're not printed in the book at full size so you may have noticed I just stopped the video there and restarted somehow don't ask me how I managed to get ink on my hands and I had to clean my hands so if you notice I've got a stained hand it's because I've just I think it's printer ink I don't know how I managed to do it and I can't get it off so I apologize for that what I was trying to say was the patterns in the book aren't printed full size. Um, there is, however, a downloadable link. There's a page, I think it's on page 24. It tells you how to download the patterns um, full size and then you can use them. And they come out this size, little toys all come out this size, which is quite a nice manageable size to work with. However, if you're like me and just like a bit of a challenge or like miniature and you're quite used to working with little things, um, you can make them from the size printed in the book. This is the little chap here that I made it made from the size uh, as they are printed in the book. You will then need to change the uh, joints down, make them a little bit smaller. So I made the uh, leg joints and arm joints I changed to eight millimeter, and the head joint I changed to uh, ten mm yeah ten millimeter head joint. So a bit smaller than as it's said in the book, and also the little eyes were changed to four millimeter. Now the joints and the eyes are things that sometimes people are really really worried about. However, I would say persevere with cotter pin joints. Well, it's not difficult. I say persevere. You don't need to persevere. You just need to do it. If you look at the instructions in the book, Sue talks you through it. Um, it's very clear her instructions. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find a page to do it. Yeah, so there it is here. She's uh, talking about doing the legs and inserting the cotter pin joints. Um, if you're more of a visual learner, you need a bit more instruction, do have a look on our uh, at, at our other YouTube videos. We've, we've actually got a video showing you how to use, insert cotter pin joints. Um, it's on a much bigger bear, but the principle is the same on a big bear or a small bear. Um, uh, yeah, I just think it adds quite a lot of play value into it for a child or it just makes them more poseable. They move really easily. You haven't got to worry about threads breaking if you've thread jointed them. If you're looking at a safety aspect, you're used, used to button jointing. There are no buttons to come off. The heads even move as well. And 
The other thing in the book, all the way through, Sue's used glass eyes, which look adorable. Glass eyes are lovely to work with. They sculpt the face, so they, so as you draw them into the back of the head, you sort of sculpt the face a little bit, which you can't really do with a, sa a safety eye. However, glass eyes aren't suitable for children. If you are using glass eyes, that's fine if it's for an adult, but if you want to make the toy suitable for a child, um, I would suggest maybe embroidering them on. You could possibly put a safety eye on this size joint, uh, sorry, this this size um, toy, but um, you won't get the sculpting effect, but you could use a safety eye, that would, would, would work too. Again, if you're a little bit unclear on how to use the glass eyes, it does tell you in the book again, but we have got videos showing you how to use glass eyes as well on our website. Right, let's have a look through at some of the characters in a bit more detail for you. So, you've got the family of rabbits. Oh, cute. Um, and all the little clothes that you see, they all come in the book as well. Um, moving on, we go on to the squirrels. So here's our little squirrels. Cute little pair of dungarees. So if you've got little tiny buttons, things like that, that'll always be useful. Little, little bits of ri ribbon. Keep them, you know, get them sometimes on clothes tags and things. They're perfect for toy making. Um, so we've got the squirrels. What comes after that? There's lots and lots of pictures in this book as well. Uh, you know, How-to pictures. Here's the bears. So, so sweet. And this little bear here has also got a tiny bear. Very, very sweet. If you wanted to embroider the eyes, um, the this little bear here has actually got uh, closed eyes. So Sue has actually already preempted that for you and she t t shows you how to embroider the eyes on a bear. So that's quite quite cute. And oh, there he is. There's a bit better picture of him there. So you can see, hopefully you can see this anyway. There's a picture of him and his embroidered eyes. Um, so that would be comp completely safe for a child. Although cotton pin joints aren't classed as safety joints, there's nothing on there, in my opinion, that would be harmful for a child. They're right inside the components of the of the toy, so they should be absolutely fine. Here's the family of moles. Loving those colours. Um, if you on our website, by the way, if you need felt, we sell lots of different colours of felt. I love felt. It's such a beautiful material to work with. And um, the 30% wool felt comes in a huge variety of colours, gorgeous colours. So that was the mole. Uh, this little chap here, I was, I when I first started out um, Amazing Craft as a business, I was doing lots of uh, shows, crafting shows. And one day this lady came along to me and showed me a mole, almost identical to this one. And I just fell in love with him. Absolutely gorgeous. I love miniature. I love toys. I love anything with a pair of eyes, really. Um, so I absolutely loved it. Fell in love with it. And she said, oh, I've done it from a book. About 10, 15 minutes later, she came back. She said, I've got a copy for you. And she'd actually got me. I've paid her back, obviously. But she bought this, got this copy. There's somebody at the show selling these, these books. And I decided then and there, I needed to stock toy making books. I just thought it was adorable and since then we've got lots lots more titles many more titles um of different toy making books from knitting crochet needle felting etc but this book was the one that actually got me started anyway i digress so we've got to the moles then you get the gorgeous if i can find them there they are the gorgeous little mice there oh they're very very sweet little um clothes little satchel as well little bows in their hair so there are a lot of different characters you could make from this um if you have made any of these do put in the comment box below what you've made and how you got on with it and also any tips that you might have come across and also if there's any books or kits that you'd like to see inside and you'd like to you on the website it's very difficult you just see your photograph a bit of blurb and that's that but hopefully this has given you a little bit of an insight what's insight into what's inside the book if you'd like to do that with another book or another kit put a comment in the box below and hopefully we'll be able to help you out on that one um, also um, if you need any supplies or you need to get hold of a book do look at our website www.amazingcraft.co.uk 
Um, and finally, if you like this sort of thing, you're a crafter like us, please do subscribe and hopefully we'll be bringing you more videos like this very soon. Happy crafting!